Hello everyone, my name is Kwamea Ross and today my message is called Take It Back Now. The enemy has many tools, weapons, and devices that he uses to discourage the children of God. He wants to dissuade, he wants to dissuade us and prevent us from serving God. He wants us to become frustrated. He wants to do things to ruin our testimony, to cause us not to receive the answers to our prayers, but to take away our blessings and our gifts. And he does this so he can cause us to walk away from God and to serve him. He wants to frustrate people and make them feel as if their their time serving God is, is worthless, that they were serving God in vain, that they want to walk away from God and feel discouraged. And we're not supposed to get discouraged. As you know, God is a good God. He gives gifts to his children. It talks about it in the Bible. And I'm going to read to you. From the book of Matthew, chapter six, verses 30 through 33, and it says, wherefore, if if God so clothe the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Therefore, take no thought, saying, what shall we eat or what shall we drink or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. So it says, if we seek God's kingdom first, he's going to supply all of our needs. He's Jehovah Jireh. He supplies all of our needs according to his riches and glory. We don't have to sit here and worry about our needs being supplied when we seek his kingdom. We seek his throne room. We wake up. We put him first. We live in righteousness, and he will provide a way for us now. It also says in the Bible, if we ask, we shall receive, and that God is a good father that giveth good gifts to his children. So I'm reading to you from the book of Matthew, chapter 7, verses 7 through 11, and it says, Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asketh, receiveth, and he that seeketh, findeth. And to him that knocketh, it shall be opened. Or what man is there of you, whom if his son asks bread, will he give him a stone? Or if he acts a fish, will he give him a serpent? If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your Father, which is in heaven, give good things to them that ask him? So as you see, God is a Father who wants to give good gifts. He does not want to do evil to us. He does not want to withhold anything good from us. A lot of time, we don't receive what we want because we don't ask. And if we do ask, we ask with a, 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 a heart that is amiss, meaning we ask with either a heart of double-mindedness or we ask for evil intentions, evil motives. But God is not going to withhold anything from us. He is a father that rewards his children with gifts. He does give out gifts. And these gifts come through answered prayers and blessings. And a lot of time, we have not received these blessings. We don't see them because the enemy has been taking them. Now, I'm going to read some scripture in the Bible that shows you where the enemy has been taking gifts from God's people. And we're going to go through after this. We're going to talk about how to take it back. We're going to take everything back that the enemy has stolen from us. Now, I'm reading to you first from the book of John, chapter 10, verse 10. And it says, the thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. So let's look at that again. It says the thief. The enemy is a thief. He wants to take what belongs to us. A thief steals something that is not theirs. A thief takes something that they did not deserve to have. They did not work for it. They did not earn it. It was not given to them. It's not theirs. It does not rightfully belong to them, but they have taken possession of it. They have stolen it by violence or some other means. They have taken something that is not theirs. They have illegally gained access of something by taking it from another person who originally owned it, who has rights to it. So we have rights to these things that the enemy has been stealing. This is what he's been doing. He's been taking from God's children and dispersing upon his children so they can serve him. This is how the enemy keeps people in bondage and entrapped because the, he, he takes things from the children of God who have prayed for these blessings, who have asked God, who have been who are tearing and laboring to receive these things, who have sought God's kingdom, who have sought him and his righteousness. But then he goes and takes things to give to his children because he wants men to serve him. And he wants to seem as if he's the one giving these things, but these originally are belonging to God's people. So we're going to talk about getting that back because it's illegal. Now I'm going to read to you from the book of Matthew, chapter 11, verse 12. And it says, and from the days of John the Baptist unto now, the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence and the violent take it by force. So the violent is taking it out. These are demon spirits. These are principalities and powers, rulers of darkness of this world, spiritual wickedness in high places that work through men to take what does not belong to them. They have taken it violently by force. They take it by force. If someone uses violence, you've just seen, uh, I watched on the news where there were some robbers who 
basically oppressed their victims. They took it by force. They used weapons. They used guns. They kidnapped them. They did something. They, they, they took their lives. They slayed them. They took it by force. When someone takes them by force, there's violence usually added with it. And so the, it says that the kingdom of heaven suffers violence. There are people doing violence against them. They're committing violence. Yes, they, they might not. They might use weapons, physical weapons, to, to take the lives of God's children and to oppress them and put them in bondage and captivity so they can steal from them. Or they're using spiritual weapons. As you know, that they're using witchcraft and sorcery, putting you on all putting spells upon you, doing things to swap your destiny, doing things to hijack the answers to your blessings, taking your miracles and your breakthroughs and all the things that belong to you, taking your children and your spouses and everything, your money, your business. They are stealing it. The violent are taking it by force. It says they are violent. And God is not like violence, whether that violence is done physically with physical weapons or that whether it's done spiritually through altars and burnt offerings. They are making sacrifices to idols so they can take things from God's people. And this is something that is illegal. This is a crime in God's eyes. They are breaking his laws and they're committing violence against the kingdom of heaven. They're committing violence against the righteous, against his servants, against his anointed. And so I have one more scripture here. And I'm reading from the book of Micah, chapter 2, verses 1 through 4, and it says, Woe to them that devise iniquity and work evil upon their beds. When the morning is light, they practice it, because it is in the power of their hand. And they covet fields and take them by violence, and houses and take them away. So they oppress a man in his house, even a man in his heritage. Therefore, thus saith the Lord, Behold, against this family do I devise an evil, from which ye shall not remove your necks, neither shall ye go haughtily, for this time is evil, and that day shall one take up a parable against you and lament with a doleful lamentation and say we be utterly spoiled he have changed a portion of my people how have he removed it from me turning away he have divided our fields so basically as you see it says the wicked they practice evil and iniquity in the day they get up and devise before they even get out their beds when they wake up in the morning they're devising conspiring how they can do evil against another man how they can oppress another man and take what belongs to that man and overtake him and oppress him and put him in bondage and captivity so they can take from that person he says, God says he's going to devise an evil against their families. That they would not be able to remove from their necks. That's what it says. He's going to take their fields and divide it. I mean, he's going to disperse what they have, their spoils that they have stolen and give it to his people, give it to what belongs to rightfully. And so this is what we look at. We have to know the claims. That's why we have to know the word. We have to stay in the word because see, God's not going to allow the thief to get away with it. See, the thief has done this. Satan has given them the power to come up against us. Those who are walking according to their flesh, those who are of Satan's kingdom, those who are Satan's children and Satan's followers are taking it, taking it by force, meaning they are forcibly taking what they want now. They're using whatever extreme measures that they have, but we don't have to abide by that. See, when we have God, greater is he that is in us than he who is in the world. It says he will fight against those who fight against us. He will contend with our enemies. He will cause our enemies to, to be beneath us. They will be taken in their own devices. It said the wicked in their pride do persecute the poor. Let them be taken in their own devices, which they have imagined. As you remember, when 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 David was gone away, he, he was off to battle or whatever, and they took they they invaded his camp, they ransacked and pillaged his camp, and they took his wives and all his things, and all the men lost their wives, and they were all crying out. And so David cried out to God and, and he tore off his shirt and he was like are you, can I recover my things? And God said, yes, you will surely recover everything. And so we're going to recover everything. David went back and God gave him the glory. He took everything back from the enemies. He took everything that belonged to him. This is what we're going to do. I'm going to lead you through some prayers and some declarations so we can get everything back. Because you can see the enemy cannot continue to get away with it. The thief cannot continue to destroy us. The thief cannot continue to murder and steal from God's children. God did not mean for us to be oppressed and living in the lives of bondage, to live a life in defeat, live a life of persecution, having addictions. He, when we, when God gives us deliverance, that deliverance is supposed to be ours. But see, the enemy won't come and try and take it to give it to his people because he wants us to think that God didn't deliver us or God didn't answer our prayers. But see, the enemy has all along has stolen and siphoned it and does not belong to him. He cannot have it. When you know the law, you know what the law says, you know what's rightfully yours. See, God is a judge. You petition to his kingdom. Whoever has stolen anything that belongs to you, they cannot have it. They cannot keep it. And God will deal with every last one of them who will hold on to your things. So today we're going to command the kingdom of darkness. We're going to command the enemy to, to, to release everything. We're going to take it from them. We're not asking them. We're done asking. We're done waiting. We're not going to wait for the enemy because the enemy is never going to forfeit what he has of yours. He's not going to give it up. 
he violently took it, he's going to violently hold on to it. So it takes God now to strip it from the hands of the enemy. And so this is what we're going to decree and declare today in the mighty name of Jesus. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for this message. I come to you in the Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. And we're asking you, Father, that you will give us the ability and the power to take back everything that the enemy has taken from us. All the stolen virtues that the enemy has stolen. We will not allow the enemy to hold on to what belongs to us. We are petitioning to your throne room, Father, and you'll watch the enemy and the violent take it by force. And we're decreeing now. We're taking it all back. The enemy that shall not hold on anymore. We seize everything from the possession of the wicked in the mighty name of Jesus that the enemy will not hold on to it, that the enemy that is standing on our throne room, the enemy is holding on to our things, will be overthrown today by your power in Jesus' mighty name. Now, repeat after me. If you want everything back, you want to take it back, repeat these declarations after me. Say this and believe and trust and have faith. Now, in the mighty name of Jesus, I take back my identity. I take back my inheritance. I take back my glory. I take back my anointing. I take back my power. I take back my strength. I take back my knowledge. I take back my wisdom. I take back my destiny. I take back my favor. I take back my talents. I take back my spiritual gifts. I take back my blessings. I take back my energy. I take back my health. I take back my prosperity. I take back my abundance. I take back my life. I take back my virtues. I take back my body. I take back my salvation. I take back my courage. I take back my sanity. I take back my resilience. I take back my marriage. I take back my spouse. I take back my children. I take back my victory. I take back the fruits of my labor. I take back my harvest. I take back my labor. I take back my progress. I take back my position. I take back my ministry. I take back my joy. I take back my peace. I take back my deliverance. I take back my testimony. I take back my authority. I take back my throne. I take back my breakthroughs. I take back my miracles and I take back the answered prayers that God has released unto me in Jesus mighty name. Amen. Again, you have to be violent, just as violent. See, we, we, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places, meaning we're going to command the kingdom of darkness to release everything unto us. No witch, no sorcerer, no, no, no priest, no voodoo God. No one can take anything without the power of Satan. See, it takes Satan's power, his principalities, his gods and idols. But you should know that God is king of kings and lord of lords. There's no God before him. So we have the ability. God has the power. When we serve and worship him, we have the power over every deity, over every idol, over every false god, over every enchantress, over every sorcerer, over every witch. And we do not have to allow them to take anything. We have to get violent with the kingdom of darkness, meaning get violent with these spiritual principalities in the heavenlies who are fighting against us, who are stripping us of the things that belong to us. And we take it back. We seize what belongs to us. We do not allow the enemy to have it. You do not passively walk around. Just like if somebody walked up on your property. And they walked up into your house and tried to take something, would you just sit there and sit still and do nothing? You're going to do something about it, right? You're going to defend what belongs to you. You're going to take some, some, some action. You're not going to just sit there and watch them walk out the house with what belongs to you. So this is how we have to be with Satan's kingdom. We cannot allow Satan to just come and take what he wants. We have to get violent with Satan. We have to get violent with the enemy. And we have to take it back.